Hey everybody, my name's Commander Eagle131, and I'd like to show off the Scintillant. So I often find myself building what I think of as large, militaristic looking C-class frigates, uh, whether they be for exploration or combat. So I really wanted to go off and try something different. This build's got no roleplay elements worked in like many of my other builds do. Uh, this ship was a pure, creative ship design project that also served my need for a custom ship in New Game Plus 5. Exterior design-wise, I had a few rules. I wanted to play around more with the demo structural pieces, and I also wanted to design something with asymmetry. In addition, I also kind of wanted to bring a warlike and sharp or blade-like look to the ship. So I named the ship the Scintillant because I wanted to give it a name that inspires a vivid thought or emotion, unlike other Deimos Staryard's names being more on the nose like Gladius or Aegis. The basic design here are three main pods or fuselages tethered together. The port side pod contains the cockpit, the starboard pod contains what might be a forward cannon, and the center fuselage carries the main blade or sword-like look, as well as some of the main interior halves, and all the structural pieces, fuel tanks, and gear placed carefully to make the ship look like it makes sense. So I have to point out on the note of the landing gear that credit for placement of those rounded horseshoe-shaped Hope Tech landing gear goes out to Claudius Isius, another shipbuilder I met over at the official Bethesda Discord's uh, shipbuilding channel. I shared an early build of the Scintillant there, and they came back at me with their absolutely amazing take on it, and they dubbed theirs the UC Tridents. So I asked Claudius if Eeg's ship shop engineers could take their Hope Tech landing gear idea and adapt it into the Scintillant, because they just look so dang cool fitted like that. So massive thanks to Claudius for letting me adapt their idea into the Scintillant. Um, I was at a bit of a creative block at the time, and once I saw those horseshoe-shaped landing gear and put them on, it just completed the look, so thank you so much. Now I'd like to think of the Scintillant as the Trident's ugly sibling. <laughs> or if that's too offensive, we can just go with the Scout model. <laughs> so interior design-wise, I admit I didn't really put as much thought into it as I usually do. There's some minor thought that went into it, but as I said, this isn't really a roleplay ship, so I just kind of put stuff on there that I like to look at on the interior. So I will be giving a very short uh, interior tour towards the end, so if you're not interested in heading off into the Builder with us, then go ahead and skip to that segment now. Before we head off into the Builder, I got three disclaimers for you. This will not be a ship builder tool tutorial, this will be a ship build tutorial. I will be showing you how to build this specific ship and assuming that you're already comfortable with the ship builder. To build the Scintillant to exacting specifications, you'll need rank 4 ship designs, up to rank 3 piloting, and to be level 60 or above. Again, all that is required for exacting specifications. You'll be able to build the ship without all of it, but your mileage may vary based on your own level and skill rank. And last, the ship relies on some heavy glitch building, the flip glitch to be exact. If you don't know how to do this, I'll be showing how during the builder segment. Things like your achievements won't be affected and Todd Howard himself won't come to your house and accuse you of cheating or anything like that, so don't worry. It's an easy trick and you'll be flip glitching like crazy by the end of the build segment. Almost ready to head off into the builder, but before we do that, we're going to need to head off to Hope Tech to pick up some Staryard specific modules. First, we're going to need four Hope 55 landing gear. Then we're going to need four HAB spines. Two HAB cross braces. Two Slayton SAE-5660 engines. And one Hope 11 Docker 4. And that's it. Not a whole lot this time. So I'll see you off in the builder. Okay, here we are in the builder. I don't have everything exploded yet, uh, but I wanted to show um, the three parts kind of pulled apart from each other. So here you can see the three fuselages as I described it. Um, the only thing keeping these two sidecars attached to the center fuselage are these um, two Hope Tech cross braces that we bought. So I just wanted to show this just so you can see, you know, the layout. Okay. So let's go ahead and skip to where everything is exploded. Okay, so 
now we've got everything broken apart, exploded into uh, each fuselage section, including the um, habs here. So here's our habs. And right over here, I have a saying in a lot of my build sections, um, I call all the structural parts and all those other things the big pile of stuff. Well, basically this entire thing is basically just one giant pile of stuff. <laughs> so right here with this pile of stuff, this is going to be our port side fuselage where the cockpit sits, sits right on this uh, shelf here. Um, over here, this pile of stuff here, uh, this is um, the starboard fuselage where the forward cannon is. Okay, and this pile of stuff here, this is the center fuselage um, that everything sort of connects to. And um, there's a lot of landing gear on this build, uh, so I've taken all the landing gear and they get their own piles for each little fuselage section. So I'm going to try to keep this as organized as possible. This is definitely a little piece heavy build, so I'm going to try to keep this as fast and concise as I possibly can. Um, so let's start with our Habs. Okay, so we'll assemble the Habs um, fuselage section by section. Um, so right here uh, that my mouse is moving along, these three sections here, these are all three decks of the uh, center fuselage. So we'll start with this. I usually build out the pathway from exit points to cockpit, um, but I don't think it's really that important. I usually do that to attempt to force ladder and door connection points, but I don't think that's going to be necessary with this since, you know, the, the layout's not super duper complicated and we're forcing a few connections anyway by using these cross braces and stuff. So let's get started by placing our, our parts. So tab on over to your landing bays. We're going to be using this NG-6 landing bay. So go ahead and place one of those in your builder. Okay, focusing on this point right here, we're going to be placing a Deimos one by one, any one of your choice. In front of that one by one, we're going to place a Deimos workshop. If it'll go, there we go. Okay, let's move up one more level. Um, we're going to be placing a Deimos three by one, all in one berth. You can use whichever three by one you'd like. I really enjoy the all in one berths from Deimos and Stroud. The three by ones are really cool. Okay, let's go ahead and back this up. Okay, next, attached to this forward point here on the 3x1, we're going to be using all four of our Hope Tech hab spines that we bought from um, Valo. So, place four of them and anchor them to the second deck right here on the all in one berth. Next, tap on over to your dockers. We're going to place our special Hope 11 4 docker right at the front of our hab spine setup. Just like that. Okay, so let's move up to the top deck. We're just going to place a Deimos Captain's Quarters right here on the top. All right. Okay, so let's move back down to the first floor. Let's focus on this point right here on the Deimos Workshop. Um, we're going to assemble the Habs for our uh, port side fuselage. Grab one of those cross braces from Hope Tech, and it goes right in the middle of our ground floor like that. Okay, and then a Deimos control station attached this way, like that. And then in front of that control station, if you tab on over to your cockpits, um, I'm using the DS 20.3 Phobos cockpit. That goes right up front. And that's literally it for the port side um, fuselage. If you saw the intro video, you saw how huge that side thing looked. Uh, that's all structural and landing gear and, and the like. So uh, we'll be having fun with that in a little bit. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, turn around your camera. Let's get the uh, starboard fuselage assembled. So take our final cross brace half, and again, right in the middle of the first floor, um, grab a Deimos armory that gets attached to the rear attachment point. Grab a Deimos control station, and when that gets placed underneath the armory. So there's two decks to, to the starboard fuselage. And that gets placed underneath, not like this, not stacked perfectly like so. It gets staggered like this. So there's going to be a little ladder there. Um, 
I tried to keep the ladders to a minimum in this build, but um, there's unfortunately going to be one little ladder there. Okay, so that about sums it up for the placement of the HAB. So let's just very, very quickly talk about uh, the layout, the through traffic with, you know, walking on feet should work. Um, you come in through the landing bay and uh, you'll end up in this one by one right here. Um, there's going to be a ladder. There should be a ladder anyway right here that lets you access all three floors. If you need to get to the cockpit or the, uh, you know, the access for the port and starboard fuselages, you have to come through this bulkhead into the workshop and then go out these little hallways on the side. I tried to make it so it was a really simple layout and, and not super maze-like. So that's our basic layout. All right, so we're going to begin assembling all the big piles of stuff now. Um, so we're going to do this as organized as possible. There's a lot of little parts. There's a lot of uh, glitch building. So this is going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to try to do this as fast and concise as possible. Um, so we'll start by assembling almost in its entirety. I don't think we're going to be able to do all of it uh, because of how it's going to work. But we're going to do most of the middle section. Um, then we're going to assemble the port and starboard fuselages uh, separate, all three separate from each other. And then when we're done, we're going to connect everything together. It should work that way. So let's get started. So I know we just placed all these halves, uh, but let's go ahead and actually disconnect the port side and starboard side halves for now. So this is the port side. I'm going to move mine over with the port side pile and the starboard halves with the starboard pile. Um, so if you're building along with me right now, go ahead and just take them off real quick and put them somewhere out of the way. I wanted to place all the halves now so we don't have to flip flop back and forth later on. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup over here and I'll meet you over here in a second. Okay, I've moved some stuff around and uh, we're over here now. So sorry if that caused any disorientation. Uh, we were over here, we're over here now. Um, we're gonna be working very closely with all these items. So most of these items are structural. Um, we're going to start from the front, work our way back, and then work our way down. Um, this back section here, we'll do that at the very uh, last portion of this middle section. Um, okay, so focusing on this point here on our front hab spine, we're going to be taking this Deimos spine A right there. And then right behind it on these three hab spines, we're going to be using three Deimos spine Bs. Like so. Okay. Focusing on this little shelf here, uh, we're just going to place a Deimos cowling. And that's going to lead nicely up to the rooftop here. So up here, we're going to be using another Deimos A spine. And then a Deimos C spine behind it. Okay. Next would come these, but we're like I said, we're going to do those last. Um, so let's move down to the sides of our captain's quarters. We're going to be using two Deimos bumpers, one per side. And it should look like that. Tap on over to your fuel tanks. Find these Titan 350 Helium-3 tanks. Again, we're going to be using one per side. So it should look like this. Okay. Let's go ahead and move back to the front area. We're going to be using this Deimos A-Wing and that gets attached like so. Right behind the A-Wing goes a C-Wing. Then behind that C-Wing goes a B-Wing. And then behind that goes an A-Wing. The uh, backwards variant. So moving over to the starboard side, the other side of these uh, halves, um, we're going to be basically mirroring it, but it's going to be a little bit of uh, offset from the other side. So we're going to be using this um, wing A flip starboard, but instead of putting it like this, we're going to put it one block back, and that's going to create our nice little satisfying asymmetry right here. And then behind that, we're going to use this C wing, and then behind that, the backwards A wing. Just like that. So let's go ahead and move back to this point right here on our three by one hab. We're just going to use two portholes, one per side. I'm just going to highlight the two I've got and move them 
drag them over. But yeah, two portholes, one per side right there. That's our ladder well. Okay, so let's go ahead and swing the camera to the underside here of our hab spine setup. And this is where we're gonna do our glitch build. Okay, so for our glitch build, we're gonna focus on this point right here on the bottom side of our first hab spine. We're gonna be placing a Deimos A skeg, uh, but as you can see, it doesn't want us to do that. So we're gonna be utilizing what I like to call the flip glitch. Um, so here's how you do it. You have to place your item in the builder first. You can't just hover your mouse over and select it from the menu. It doesn't work like that. It won't let you do it. So you have to place the A skeg in the builder first, okay? And then click and drag it over to the point that you want it to attach to. See it's red, doesn't let us. All you do is flip it and then flip it back and then wait for the sound effect um, that tells you it's actually connected. So flip, flip, sound effect and then you press the cancel button, whatever that is on whatever console you're playing on. You hit cancel, and then it should connect. I double click the build to verify that it's actually connected because sometimes it gets confused where to connect it. So let's do that one more time. You got your ace keg placed in the builder, not from the menu, can't do it that way. Place it in the builder, click and drag it to the point you want it on. Game says no, flip, flip, sound effect, cancel. Double click, it's connected. So that's how you do the flip glitch. It's really easy. Um, it's honestly muscle memory for me at this point, uh, and it probably will be for you too if you're gonna follow along with this build because we're gonna be doing a lot of that, especially when we move down to the lower sections of uh, the uh, fuselages. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so focusing on the point behind our A skeg that we just glitch built, we're gonna place a B skeg. Then behind it, we're going to place a spine F. And then behind that, another uh, demo skeg B. So you can just copy that one over. Okay. And that's it for this, this bottom section here. Uh, there's these uh, Tayo end caps and uh, some more skegs, but we're going to have to glitch build those uh, towards the end. So we'll, we'll save those for later. In fact, I'm just going to take these and move them over here. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this back area. So let's go ahead and focus on this point right here on your um, one by one. Tab over to your reactors section. And I'm using this 104 DS mag inertial reactor. I believe this is the level 60 and above um, B class reactor. It does generate quite a bit of power. In fact, it generates more power than some C class reactors do. Um, if you don't have access to this yet, you're going to want to find a reactor that has connection points on all faces uh, because this is a, a structural item that everything in the back sort of hooks onto. So that gets connected there. Okay, go ahead and tap over to your um, cargo. Um, this is the one that I'm using, this Galleon S204 cargo hold. Um, this is a big one, it's got 1400 storage. So if you don't have access to this, or if you don't want it taking up that much mass, look at our maneuverability. It's 83 with all these engines we got, but if we delete it, it, it goes up to 100. So max mobility, and you'll probably have some, don't quote me, but you'll probably have some to play with left over if uh, you delete that. Uh, but for my build, I'm keeping cargo because I like to have storage. Okay, so we got our cargo module there. Uh, now we should be able to attach everything else. So let's start from the top and then work our way top, back, and downwards. So focusing on this point right here, we're going to place a Hope Tech radiator. It's the big triangular one. Okay. And then behind that, attached to its back spot, we're going to be placing a Deimos tail A. All right. Let's go ahead and look at the two side connecting points for on the cargo hold. We're gonna be using two Deimos A wings, one per side, like this. Okay, we'll go down one level. Uh, let's focus on the side attachment points for the reactor. We're gonna be using two 
Deimos bumpers. One per side. Like that. Okay. Now, go ahead and tab over to your engines. We're going to be using those two um, Slayton 5660 engines that we bought from uh, Hope Tech. We're just going to use two and stick them in that empty spot right there, directly underneath the Deimos tail. So focusing on this empty spot connector point here on your bottom Slayton engine, um, tap on over to your cargo holds. And I'm using these two Dagama 1000s. Um, these are purely structural. Um, uh, they have the added benefit of giving uh, 420 cargo space, um, but I like them for the cosmetic look. We get that nice sort of bevel right there that leads into our Slayton engines on the bottom like that. Okay, almost finished. Tab on over to your landing gear. Um, find two Hope 5 landing gear. We're gonna be using two of these guys. Okay, the first one is going to get placed on that Deimos Spine F on the front of our center fuselage right here. So that gets attached like that. And then the second one, if we spin the camera this way, this one's gonna get attached to the bottom of our reactor. Like that. These Hope 5 landing gear, they don't supply all that much thrust, unfortunately, but they're some of my favorite ones because they look, they look really nice. They look like they would support quite a bit of weight. So I like throwing these on my builds when I have these sort of elongated ships or sections that jut out. It's nice to stick these there, in my opinion. Okay, we're going to use two of our Hope 55 landing gear. Okay, and we're going to be placing them right here on the side of the ladder wheel on our one by one. So one goes there, then the other one goes on the other side like this. And it should look something like that. All right, and congratulations. That's the bulk of our center fuselage almost fully assembled. So let's go ahead and um, do the uh, port side fuselage next. Okay, so here's our um, port side fuselage habs that we pulled off a little bit earlier. Uh, and there's our starboard side ones. So again, like I said, we're gonna start with the port side one first. Um, so most of this is gonna be structural. We're gonna have to flip flop a little bit, but I'll try to keep this as easy as possible. So under your structural tab, focus on this point right here. We're going to be placing a Deimos Cowling 4 right right there. And then directly behind it goes a Hope Tech Radiator. Just like that. Let's go ahead and move down one level. Focusing on that point on the side of our Deimos Control Station, we're going to stick a Deimos A-Wing. Like this. Okay, let's go ahead and swing the camera around to the bottom side of our 2x1 HAB. We're going to be placing this Deimos Hull A right there on the front and bottom connector. Let's go ahead and focus on this front connector for the Hull A. We're going to be using this um, upside down Nova cowling and that's going to get placed right there. As you can see, we're going to need to glitch build that because it doesn't let us place it there. So just flip, flip, sound effect, cancel. Done. It's connected. Okay, so tab over to your landing gear. We're going to be using this um, Stroud Eklin Aculander 11. Uh, this is the one that's got the port and starboard and mid variants. So we're going to be using the middle variant. So make sure you're using that one. And it gets placed right behind our hull A in this empty space right here. Tab over to your structural. Locate a Deimos belly and flip it aft and that gets placed right here on our Aculander, like that. Okay. Go ahead and tab on over to your engines tab. Find this Dunn 31 engine, and that gets placed right on that shelf, just like that. Tab over to your fuel tanks. 
find a M30 helium-3 tank. It's the quarter cylindrical looking one. And we're going to be placing it on the other side of our Deimos Hull A, directly underneath this cross brace. Like that. Okay, so almost finished. For the final touches on the uh, port side fuselage, um, tap over to your landing gear. Find one of our Hope 55 horseshoe looking things that Claudius said we could use. And that goes there, like so. Okay. And last, find a Pinpoint 3G gear, uh, the aft variant. I like putting these on a lot of my builds because this rear engine actually animates when you're flying. So it looks nice when you're um, playing in third person or if you're taking pictures of your ships. Um, this doesn't actually provide any maneuverability thrust, doesn't give you any extra speed or anything. It just animates, so it's kind of a cool little touch. Unfortunately, it won't go there, but fortunately we can glitch build it. So flip, flip, sound effect cancel, and it's connected. And that completes the port side fuselage. So let's go ahead and move on to the starboard one. Okay, so let's go ahead and take our completed port side assembly and move it on over out of the way somewhere. Okay, so now we have this nice clean workspace for our um, starboard side. So here's our starboard halves that we pulled out earlier. Let's go ahead and move these around. Okay, there's no way around it. Uh, we're going to have to flip flop a lot. Um, there's a lot of little pieces here. There's one really big glitch build, um, so we're going to be flip-flopping. So I'll do this as painlessly as I possibly can. So let's get started here with this, um, with this front area. So tab on over to your grab drive section in your builder menu. I'm using this Aurora 13G drive, and that gets mounted right here in this little shelf. If you don't have access to this one yet, or if you want to use something else, that's fine. Just it's very important that if you want to mount a grab drive there, it has to have connecting points on all of its faces because there's going to be a lot of things, as you can see here, attaching to this. So this is kind of a structural centerpiece right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and address this monstrosity here. Uh, this is the forward, the little mini forward cannon. Uh, this is one giant glitch build it's kind of like a glitch within the glitch uh, and uh, you're about to find out why here in a second so tab on over to your structural go ahead and find one of these nova cowlings it's the elongated one and we're going to flip it upside down and mount it to the front face of this control station go ahead and copy this we're going to be placing a second one right here on the grab drive Okay, and then on top we're going to mount a Deimos A spine 4 and then a Deimos B spine behind it. Now you have to do it in this order. You can see here we've got a Nova weapon mount, but we can't put that in there. We can move that out and stick that in there just like that and then we'll glitch build this piece back in. So now is a good time to put your weapons on this weapon mount if you want to run weapons. I'm using four PB-175s. Uh, I'm more partial to particle beams these days. Uh, it's just what I really like to roll with. So I got four PB-175s in here. Put whatever you want on board. Um, but um, now's a great time to do it because if you want to put guns in after you get done glitch building this, you're going to have to glitch build it all over again. Uh, so let's go ahead and move that weapon mount in there with our completed weapon assembly. And now we can move our Nova cowling back in. Flip, flip, cancel, and it's connected. So basically what's going on here is um, this Nova cowling is, is, once we take it out, it won't attach to this point again, but it'll attach to these. And it appears as if because it's attached to something, the game doesn't care. It just says, okay, it's attached. <laughs> so that's what I meant. We did kind of a glitch within a glitch build there. I don't know if that makes any sense, but uh, yeah, that's how we achieved this really neat forward cannon look. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so focusing back on our grab drive area here, um, let's go ahead and place two Titan 350 helium three tanks, one per side. Okay, 
Moving up one to the top connector on our grab drive, we're going to be placing a Deimos Cowling 4. And then behind that, we're going to be using two Hope Tech Pipes B mid. Then behind those pipes, we're going to place a Hope Tech radiator. Just like that. But let's go ahead and go down one level. Um, right here on this back portion, in this little empty space, goes a Deimos Hull A. Okay, let's go ahead and move down one more level. So now we're looking at the very bottom floor. We're going to be using two portholes right here on each, each connecting point. So one there, and one there, just like that. And then focusing in this empty spot here goes another Deimos Hull A, like that. Go ahead and tab on over to your um, fuel tanks. We're gonna be using this M30 quarter cylindrical looking tank. And that gets fixed underneath our cross brace on the side of our hull A. Tab on over to your landing gear. We're going to be using one of these Stroud Eklund mid landing gear, the Acculander. Um, again, make sure it's the mid version and not the port or starboard. And that gets placed there. And that's gonna fill in that empty spot. Tab back over to your structural side. Focusing on this point on our Acculander goes a demo Spelly aft. All right. And then let's go ahead and move up one level. Focusing on this Deimos Hull A, on this face right here, we're going to be placing a Deimos A wing, like that. Okay, and that's it, I believe, for the structural bits on our starboard fuselage. So let's get this engine put on. Tap over to your engines, and we're using another Dunn 31 engine, and that just goes in that shelf there, like this. Okay, it's time to place our um, landing gear. And here comes some more glitch building. So let's go ahead and get our Hope 55 gear placed first. Um, we're going to be sticking that right here on our armory, just like that. Okay, and then the rest of them are going to be our uh, 3G pinpoint landing gear. So um, since we're right here, let's just start from the back and work our way forward. So use the aft starboard aft pinpoint 3g gear we're sticking it there uh, have to glitch build it so flip flip sound effect cancel done double click connected so in front of our hope 55 gear goes the pinpoint 3g mid gear again won't let us place it but flip flip sound effect cancel double click connected okay in front of that one goes the pinpoint 3g4 Again, won't let us place it, so flip, flip, sound effect, cancel, double click, connected. Sweet. That's our starboard fuselage, 100% done. So let's go ahead and do the final touches here. I'm going to go ahead and do some cleanup, and I will see you in about one second. All right, we've got all three main parts lined up right next to each other, so... Just to reorient all of you guys, right here is our starboard fuselage that we just assembled. Right here is our center fuselage that we assembled a little bit ago. And right here is our port side fuselage with the cockpit. I ended up taking these Hope 55 landing gear off. They used to be right here. I forgot that we have to glitch build these in at the very end. So remove these two Hope 55 landing gear from the center fuselage because what we're about to do won't work if these are here. So go ahead and take them off. Again, my apologies. Don't mean to confuse you. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to have to put those on last. Sorry about that. So without further ado, let's get started here. Starting with our port side fuselage, just double click the whole assembly and we're going to be taking this uh, hab cross brace and attaching it to that point on the first floor on our Deimos workshop. So we got three blocks here in length. It's getting attached to the middle block. So go ahead, double click the port side fuselage and attach it. Okay. 
And we're gonna do the same thing with the starboard fuselage. So let's go ahead and spin the camera around. Double click the full assembly. And again, we're attaching it right there to that middle block. Let's just go ahead and double click the whole ship just to make sure everything looks like it's connected. Excellent. Okay, so now we're about to do our final um, glitch builds. Um, here's our uh, Hope 55 gear. Um, let's go ahead and reattach them. <laughs> Second time's a charm, right? Um, right to that spot. So grab it, flip, flip. No sound effect, but cancel and it should attach. Nice. Do the same thing on the other side. Flip, flip. No sound effect, but cancel and it should attach. Okay, for our final two glitch builds, we're going to be using two of these TIO end caps. We're going to be attaching it to this point here. It's on our first floor again, on the front connector on the side, right in front of our main cross brace connector. Now I have these here um, just so it makes it look a little beefier, so these skinny little have cross braces aren't the only things keeping this ship from tearing itself apart when it's flying. So they will need glitch builds. So let's go ahead and move this in here. See, red, flip, flip, sound effect cancel, and she's in. Let's move around to the other side. I'm gonna take this A-wing off real quick because it's really hard to see. Uh, we're going to be putting the final piece right here, down below. So take your end cap, flip, flip, cancel. No sound effect, but it should have attached. Yep. Let's go ahead and replace our A-wing. So, final two structural bits go on the bottom. Let's go ahead and swing the camera upside down. And we're just going to be putting two Deimos A skegs on the bottom of those end caps that we just glitch built. So, you can just do two. I'm going to drag both of mine in. And there we have it. Almost finished. Uh, if you want to copy my um, modules and hard points exactly. Um, let's get the shield placed. I'm using this um, Vanguard Bulwark shield generator. It's the best B-class shield that I've seen yet. I still haven't seen a better one. Um, only unlockable after you complete the first quest of the Vanguard quest line. And we're gonna stick that right there on the uh, Hope Tech cross brace. So if you choose not to use that one or if you can't, hopefully you can find one that fits somewhere because there's not a whole lot of connection points left. Okay, so let's put these guns on. If you copy my hard point selection exactly, I'm using two Firebolt 4000s. One on each fuselage. Let's go ahead and swing the camera back to the front and tilt it upside down. So for the final armaments, I'm using three Vanguard Hellfire Auto Cannons. They're my favorite ones. Look at that. High rate of fire, decent hull damage, but most importantly, each one only takes two power out of your uh, power budget. So you can stack these up quite nicely. So on this particular build, I'm running three, two on one side like this, on the uh, Deimos wings. And then our third one goes on the other side on this wing here. And that's it. So congratulations, you've got a fully assembled Scintillant. So let's go ahead and talk about my coloring mindset. Okay, so I'm not going to go into every single individual piece in detail. Um, I'm just going to talk about my general mindset for the coloring. Um, so my mindset, um, basically low vis for the things I wanted to look at last, high vis for the things I wanted to look at first. Um, we have this two-tone, three-tone neutral color thing going on here. Um, so when I first painted the ship, I actually just double clicked the whole thing and painted it this um, this color here. Kind of this gunmetal black, gunmetal gray color. And then I moved on to paint the top deck here, the blade as I call it, these Deimos wings. Uh, I painted those separate. Um, and uh, if you want to copy my color scheme, this is what it looks like. Color one, color two, color three. Now I, I gave it kind of like this blue touch to give it kind of a not quite white, not quite gray color, um, maybe kind of like an ice white color. And it looks really cool in the proper lighting. 
and it really goes with the name I gave it, um, the scintillant, because uh, you'll see in the proper lighting when you're playing in third person, you'll see just, you know, the reflection of light kind of gleaming off of, of the blade area here, like it's, you know, some movie character slowly drawing a, a sword or a dagger. <laughs> so really cool moments I've had looking at this thing, uh, and that's kind of why I painted this part the way I did. Um, so then down here on these Hope 55 landing gear, uh, the idea that I took from Claudius Isis at the uh, shipbuilding discord, um, when I first stuck these gear in here, they're by default pretty dark and you couldn't actually see them because it's very dark in there. So I decided to paint the tips of them that same shade of ice white. So you can see here, I painted the tops of them, um, that same shade almost. I had to mess with the brightness a little bit because the Hope Tech parts handle shading differently than Deimos do. So if you can't you can't just copy the color scheme, um, you have to play with the brightness some. But you can get you can get a partial match, um, like I did there. So, anyways, that just about does it for the coloring mindset. Um, three tone neutral colors and high vis on the things you want to look at first. So with that done. Let's go ahead and take a quick tour of the interior, so I'll see you inside. All right, so here we are at Eeg's ship shop. You can tell it's a nice, beautiful day here, so let's go ahead and uh, get on inside. I love this moment right here, walking underneath the entirety of the ship. You really see a lot of these uh, cool accent lights that the uh, Deimos pieces have. Let's go on inside, see what's going on. So I'm not going to get too in-depth. It's a pretty simple layout. I didn't lay out the Habs in any kind of roleplay fashion. I just kind of put stuff where it went, Habs that I kind of liked. So here we are on the first deck in the center fuselage. This is the landing area down below. Looks like I just knocked over that whole box of paper towels. Sorry about that. Move into the uh, workshop. Let's go ahead and turn left. We're going to go inside of the uh, port side fuselage area. So this is the control station. Nothing too special. And this leads to our cockpit. This is the Deimos Phobos one. Now I, I admit, I actually really like the Phobos cockpit, but I've never actually gotten a chance to use one in any of my builds until now. So I'm really glad that I got a chance to put this on one of my builds. And here's the cockpit. There's my pack of cigarettes and uh, my Nova Galactic coffee mug. <laughs> I'm still a Nova Galactic fanboy, despite all these ships I've been building lately that aren't Nova Galactic. I have to have my coffee mug there to remind me of my roots. <laughs> so let's go ahead and exit. We're going into back into the uh, center fuselage now, inside the uh, workshop where I came in, and this is still the first floor. Moving out now to the starboard fuselage. This is the armory. Here's all my guns that I use commonly on display here. I guess I still do a little bit of roleplay. I actually don't carry any weapons with me, if you care to know. Uh, if I go out on a mission, I come into the armory and grab a gun or two. But uh, I try to keep it realistic. I don't carry a million weapons with me. Like I've done in past Bethesda games. <laughs> So here's the uh, bottom floor on the uh, starboard fuselage. These are the viewing windows where you can look out and uh, check out your landing zone. Also get a nice sense of scale for the uh, underside of the ship too. Okay, so let's uh, exit the starboard fuselage. Okay, back in the center fuselage on the first floor, we're gonna go back into the one by one that we came in from. There's our landing base. So let's go ahead and jump up to the second deck in the center fuselage. So back here, this is, this isn't a one by one. We're in the three by one Deimos berth. And I've got these windows back here. These are awesome in my personal opinion, cause you get a nice, really nice sense of scale for just how big this ship is and a sense of, you know, where you are in this ship. Uh, there's uh, Claudius's Hope 55 landing gear right there. And this is uh, the Deimos 3x1 berth. 
I don't like it as much as I do the uh, Nova Galactic Births, but I'm kind of warming up to this one. It's not as cozy, but it's perfectly livable. And then over here, we're moving towards the bow of the ship. This is one of my favorite moments here. Door swinging open, and here's the really, really long hallway of uh, Hope Tech Hab Spines to get to the uh, docking hatch. I love this moment. So, just know if you do the Hope 11 docker setup like I've got it in this build, you will have to run this really long length of uh, four Habs long. Uh, so if you don't like that, you might want to reconfigure and uh, put a docker elsewhere. Okay, so still in the center fuselage on deck two, so we're going to move up to deck three now. And nothing up here except for the captain's quarters, but the captain does get their own nice little suite all to themselves. Unless your NPC crew all decide to have a party up here all at once. So, you know, privacy not totally guaranteed for the captain. But, uh, again, I don't like this one as much as the Nova Galactic one. Still warming up to it. I definitely like this little uh, posh wet bathroom that we've got here. That's pretty cool. This desk is nice too. Nice and cluttered. But uh, anyways, that pretty much sums up the interior tour. That's uh, There's not a lot to the interior for this ship. So we inspected the interior. Everything looks great. All the ladders and doors are where they need to be. Everything's built and painted. So guess what? I think she's space worthy. So uh, I'll see you in space. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was easy and clear for you to follow. But most importantly, I hope you enjoy the scintillant. It's a sharp looking ship. Sorry, I couldn't help it. I'll catch you in the next one.